agenda today, one of the primary topics we'll talk about today is how evolved our authentication systems have come to be to the various online services that we access today. We'll see that there's sort of a pattern, and then we'll get right into the meat of our presentation, which is blockchain and PKI. So if you look at our history of interactions with digital technologies, you'll see that we've come a long way. Most of us today need access to connectivity first, and then we think about security later. At any given point during our day, we have access to anywhere between 10 to 15 different applications um, across personal as well as business use. And we don't quite actively think about the security of the data that we exchange with these apps. We always want connectivity and access first and security later. Unfortunately, this fundamental need that we all have has creeped into not just our lives, but also lives of most organizations and companies that we work with. Security is always an afterthought. So let's take a look at what happens when you put security second. You get a wonderful looking chart of the world's biggest data breaches that has some of the biggest brands that we all know of. I guess I should have added Sing Health to the list as well as part of the recent news that came out. One of the patterns that we've seen in our research, a lot significant majority of these hacks have been caused by weak passwords or hackers having information to databases that have passwords stored in plain text files. If you are a user for personal use or an organization today are thinking that your passwords are actually secure, you might want to think twice. So to tackle the sort of data breaches that are so common these days, the industry as a whole figured out a need for advanced authentication systems. So we still have our traditional username and password based authentications that are widely used, but we're seeing an increased use of social login and biometrics for personal use, especially in the banking sector where you use your smartphone uh, fingerprint sensor to log on to applications. The top right hand quadrant obviously focuses very much on the organization. Uh, the options that are available today rely very much on smart cards, Biometrics for business, not so much, again, very specific use cases, but phone as a token continue to be the most popular method for a lot of organizations today. PKI is sort of in the sweet spot. It is still as a, uh, offers as a low cost option for enterprises today, but traditional PKI options do have some issues that we'll talk, at, talk about today. I think the need for a better authentication system is driven by three primary things. The first one is the usability, so the user experience when you're using an application to log on to something. The second is the trust factor behind that authentication. And the third is obviously the cost. For the end user, however, your regular users, they don't care much about the actual security behind the scenes, they care about usability more. We're seeing a lot of uh, IAM solutions, identity and access management solutions come in the marketplace and technologies like single sign-on and SAML being used quite widely. However, if you notice, uh, as an industry, all these systems work together to solve an issue of the password, but they're not able to do so in a significant way because we still rely on passwords. Passwords is the ultimate weakest point in our experience, and that's what we're hoping to get rid of. So as an evolution, if you're thinking that we have evolved and we've come a long way, I think that's a wrong statement because we're hedging massively in support of the password, no matter what systems we use today. And I think that's where blockchain-based technologies can come in pretty handy by helping us sort of wean away from the need for passwords. I, I, by the way, how many of you know somebody who writes their passwords down like this? Or how many of you know people who hate changing their passwords every three months and you can't even reuse the last three passwords? I guess a lot of you may not agree, but <laughs> a lot of people still write their passwords down. Um, so that's where PKI comes in. And this is the traditional PKI model as we as we look at it today. Now, this model or this design is obviously applicable not just to uh, all public CAs that are out there in the market, but also a lot of private CAs and in-house CAs that people use. PKI, or public key infrastructure as a technology, has been around for a while. It is ultimately the most fundamental technology that provides secure communication today. And it has a lot of different components that are part of its ecosystem, 
We don't have too much time to get into each one of these individually today, but know for sure that each one of these components work together to provide you secure access to um, applications and secure access to the web. And the most fundamental piece of this PKI technology is the use of digital certificates. Traditional PKI though has a lot of drawbacks, and CAs, whether they're internal or public, are only as good as the systems, processes, and the people that they employ. And as you can see, traditional CA designs has a lot of central point of failures, a lot of attack vectors for the hacker to perform a denial of service attack on. Apart from the actual CA design issues that we just looked at, there's also a lot of cryptography-based issues that affect CAs as well. So last year, a team of researchers uh, essentially performed a SHA-1 collision. So the existing cryptography in which PKI is fundamentally based out of was already outdated. And we know that you know, with quantum computers becoming more and more kind of popular these days and coming out in the news, we know that other forms of uh, cryptography weaknesses um, are almost gonna happen any time. And so apart from design issues and cryptographic issues, one of the major issues that we see out there in the, in the industry is the life cycle of the certificates and um, expiration of certificates. You have critical systems that rely on the use of certificates, and if these expire, um, the entire application can come down. So life cycle is certainly one of the areas that um, uh, are a huge drawback for most organizations, and that sort of gives PKI a bad rep. Companies tell us all the time that we hate using PKI because it's a lot of stuff to manage and we don't know how to manage it really well. Well, that's where blockchain can come in handy. Um, most people's associations with the word blockchain, I guess, um, is with the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Um, I think that's a lazy way of association because Bitcoin or blockchain is a lot more than just uh, Bitcoin. And associating blockchain to Bitcoin is almost like saying the modern technology or Web 2.0 technology of today is, let's say, PayPal. It just doesn't make sense. Blockchain is a whole lot more than that, and I think as a piece of technology it does offer us a transition or a shift from a very central client-server based model to a more distributed or decentralized model. There are four essential components of uh, any kind of blockchain technology these days. At the base, we have the cryptography that provides the privacy uh, integrity and the authenticity of the transactions and all participants of the blockchain network. We then have the consensus, which in effect is a decentralized protocol that validates the transactions. You then obviously have the ledger, which is uh, the term that a lot of people might be aware of, especially applied when applied to blockchain. And it essentially is a record of transactions that re that's replicated across nodes in a given blockchain network, and that provides the immutable record keeping. Mind you, in the blockchain technology, any kind, there's no delete function. There's always creates, reads, and updates. Nothing is ever deleted from the blockchain, and that's what provides that immutability. Business logic is something that's kind of inter intertwined into the consensus itself, and the business logic is what pieces everything together in a given blockchain network. It helps people to understand what the difference is between the traditional Web 2.0 stacks that we're all used to today. So all the applications that we use today, Facebook, Google, WhatsApp, even the RSA app, is fundamentally based on the Web 2.0 stack. And the model is, again, very much centralized. And the major difference between the Web 2.0 stack and the Web 3.0 stack, um, the blockchain stack, is that sandwiched blockchain layer right in the middle. So you have the internet layer that supports the routing protocols and such uh, stuff like that. And then right in the middle, you have the blockchain layer that contains the node network, the consensus algorithms itself, and the ledger that is replicated across all nodes in a given network. And that is what provides or helps us wean away from that central model that we're all used to in the Web 2.0 stack. Talking about apps, that is also an important component of the blockchain network because the blockchain is not just about the network, it's also about the apps. And just like we have an app layer in today's centralized models, in the blockchain model, we have D apps, or called distributed, what we call distributed apps, that we can build on top of the existing protocol. So, how does PKI fit into this whole blockchain space? Right, that's the that's the one thing that we're here to talk about. Well, if you look at trust by computation and compare that to trust by authority, 
which is very much the traditional PKI or CA model that we're all used to kind of looking at, you see that in trust by authority, the fundamental trust is driven from the top down. The trust is actually dictated by a central authority, which is at the top. So ultimately, we want to make sure that the system, the PKI system that we use, is resistant to unwanted modifications because we all know that CAs are very much vulnerable to hacks these days. We all remember the 2011 incident of DigiDoder as well as Komodo, CAs that essentially got hacked. And very recently, Symantec, uh, who's one of its partners, uh, issued 23,000 private certificates or private keys out in the open resulting in Symantec CA essentially being detrusted from the web trust store. Uh, that is powerful stuff. And if, you know, as an organization uh, that we, we have learned to rely on is detrusted, where does that leave us, right? So that's, that's where blockchain comes in. And some of the features that are still kind of available to us in this space um, are very much applicable to the use cases of the enterprise today. One such example is revocation. So in a traditional PKI design, revocation is actually performed by uh, certificate revocation lists or certificate distribution, revocation distribution points, as well as things like OCSP, uh, online status certificate uh, of, of uh, protocol. So when you look at OCSP and CRL, again, the, the model is very much centralized. So if a hacker or a bad guy were to perform a denial of service attack on the revocation service of the distribution lists, suddenly your applications that are using these certificates can no longer reach the revocation server. And in, in the traditional design, the applications do what we call a soft CRL fail, which essentially means that it will still let the user of the application go through the transaction as if nothing ever happened. That gives, just gives enough time for the hacker or the bad guy to do something wrong or get access to the network. Well, in the blockchain model, because the entire trust is decentralized, every single node or every single participant in the network now has, um, has the ability to look into the status of a certificate, so if a certificate is uh, issued correctly or revoked. And that network, together with the consensus protocol, actually dictates whether a certain application or the light party should have access to the system or not. Now that being said, uh, obviously nothing is also perfect in the blockchain and PKI world. And one of the significant issues that um, I think are, uh, that blockchain projects struggle with is the reliance of the existing uh, cryptography. And the cryptography part is sort of like the, the iceberg. You see the large mass underneath the water that nobody really talks about because it's not that fancy stuff. You know, it's not the stuff that gets the media attention. So the stuff at the top is that you know the, the project and the, the protocol is, is definitely getting a lot more attention than the stuff at the bottom. And because the existing algorithms that we have still are leveraged in blockchain projects, that is definitely some of the um, issues that we still have to discover and find a solution for. There's obviously compatibility issues that we struggle with uh, in, in blockchains and PKI. So as industry evolves and shifts in using blockchain, these applications now have to learn how to essentially speak that blockchain language. And that is certainly that um, um, uh, options that we are evaluating and trying to figure out how to make them uh, better. So as part of our conclusion, the bottom line is that users do prefer security or usability over security. If you uh, make an authentication system available to your end user, absolutely ensure that the use or the user experience of that user is, is comes first before the actual security. If you're still using passwords, it's absolutely time to change that. Get rid of passwords, they are absolutely not secure. Don't use them. And PKI is definitely a reliable technology. It is sort of like the plumbing of the web. You know, you don't, you don't see it in action, but it's there, it exists. People have been using it for decades, and people have continued to use it now. And the blockchain technology does enable newer levels of trust in this ecosystem. And when you combine blockchain together with PKI, it does offer some of the benefits that um, traditional authentication that relies on CAs uh, cannot offer today. So as part of our apply slide, uh, this is what I believe that you should focus on for the next week, the next few months, the next six uh, months. 
first uh, week, you might want to focus a little bit on reviewing your existing applications or your authentication systems. Um, look at existing flaws in your existing authentication systems. Evaluate your identity and access management systems if you have any. In the next three months, you should figure out and identify all the weak links that are part of your authentication methods. Replace passwords if you absolutely can. And prioritize your use cases based on the authentication type that you all desire. And if you are using a PKI system, focus on consolidation. Consolidate your PKI assets because ultimately rogue certificates are one of the weakest points for companies that are actually using uh, PKI internally. And in the first six months, I believe you definitely should focus on upgrading your legacy PKI implementations if you haven't already. Most companies are still using their PKI systems that they established from 10 to 20 years ago. And I think it's, it's high time that we all evolve and change those. Uh, and focus very much on the actual life cycle because ultimately when you don't know what certificates exist in your system and if certain application still has access to your network based on certificates that are valid 20 years ago, that's not safe. That absolutely is not safe. So what I recommend is definitely focus on lifecycle manage, uh, management certificates and try to look at blockchain-based technologies, especially in the field of uh, PKI. And I think with that being said, I'll open up the table for any questions. We've got about two minutes left. So um, anybody has any questions? In Web 3.0, um, I think she's going to get you a mic. Hi, I'm Jane. Um, I just saw in one of the slides, Web 3.0, it just showed like it stores record and uh, creates record, right? Mm -hmm. No deletion of Yes. So if that means like data keeps growing always, there is no deletion. Will this particular technology can be used in embedded systems? I'm just asking like, because I'm from the embedded. Yeah, that, that's a good question. That's something that we are evaluating today. Is embedded systems does obviously they don't have a lot of power, right? They don't, they don't have, have a lot of memory. Exactly. They don't have a lot of memory for storage. So that is something that we are evaluating. That falls in more in the IoT space, right? So as you see more and more devices like wireless cameras and stuff getting online, I think we are evaluating how to better adapt our blockchain protocol or a uh, consensus to fit to these uh, use cases. So can I say that as of today, we cannot use it in any as Well, as of today, IoT is a use case that, that uh, is not supported from the ground. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Any more questions? Do you propose to deploy a blockchain platform for this uh, uh, PK to be managed, or uh, it can be a part of your existing enterprise uh, uh, blockchain platform? We, what we're hoping to achieve is to essentially replace your, your existing PKI systems. Your existing PKI systems are not able to adapt to the newer threat vectors that we all see. So it, it could be a platform, um, and if you want more details about it, we can definitely have a, have a side conversation. But the idea is that we want to make it easy and seamless as possible, so you don't have to you know, struggle with dealing with the newer form of technology. All right, uh, I think our time's up. If you have any more questions, I'll be right uh, by the stage, or if they have another session, I'll be right outside. If you guys have any technical questions, we've got an entire technical team here, so if you have any specific business questions, we'll be more than happy to answer that. Thank you, Mr. C. Thank you, Mr. C.